Today on CCX News, our interview with local representative Mike Freiberg, the chief author of the End of Life Options Act, why he believes it has good chance to pass this session. The bill is shaping up to be one of the contentious of the upcoming legislative session with strong views on both sides of the issue. This weekend in Newsmakers, our Shannon Slatten sat down with Freiburg to talk about the bill, how it works and how it has worked for other states. Well, to begin, tell me about this bill that you have coming up this session. Sure. Well, it's called the End of Life Option Act. Um, I've been the chief author of it for eight years or so. Um, it's modeled after a similar law that's been in effect for about 25 years in Oregon and is in effect in 10 states plus the District of Columbia. So it's a proven law and it's proven to be effective. Um, it basically says that if you have a terminal illness, meaning uh, two f attending physicians say that you have six months or less to live and you have mental capacity, then they can prescribe to you a medication that you have to be able to self-administer and that will bring about your own death. So it's not a light bill, it's not an easy one to talk about, but I've heard from so many different Minnesotans who either have loved ones who've gone through a very painful process at the end of their life or they're going through it themselves and they just want to have that option. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a really important bill. I've heard from a lot of people who support it. All right. Why do you think this session is the one where it's going to get traction? Well, we just had a hearing on it last Thursday. Um, the, in the previous years, there have been a couple like informational hearings where they don't actually take a vote on a bill, but this was actually a real hearing. It passed out of the health committee in the House. Um, so, you know, nothing is guaranteed in a legislative process, but I do feel like the chances of it passing and becoming law are certainly better than they've ever been before. Uh, you know, we've passed legislation that emphasizes personal autonomy, you know, the reproductive rights um, and so forth, and I think this fits well into that uh, bucket of laws. All right, very serious issue with passionate people on both sides. Do you expect it to get a lot of attention this session? Yes, based on the reaction to the hearing we had on Thursday, um, there was certainly a lot of media attention. Um, so I, yeah, it'll, it'll, it's definitely generated a lot of discussions and I've heard from a lot of people about it since the hearing as well. All right, and I guess, can you have you remark on how, what, how do you think this session's gonna go overall? I think it's going to go well. I mean, it's a shorter session uh, than last year's. Uh, we passed the budget last year. The even year session is typically a bonding year, so hopefully we can pass a robust bonding bill that invests in infrastructure around the state. Um, you know, I, I'll be busy carrying legislation for our part of the northwest suburbs, um, as well as things that affect the whole state, like the End of Life Option Act. All right, we'll be watching to see how it goes. Representative Mike Freiberg, Golden Valley, thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. The Robbinsdale School Board will have some important decisions to make, from slashing its budget to choosing a new superintendent. So as people feel really unheard uh, in today's world of government, this is people's opportunity to be heard. We are reading this. We are listening. The district released a survey on the superintendent search. It's open until February 11th on the district's website. Meanwhile, the district is facing $17 million in budget cuts. Board Chair Renee Bauman says the district needs to keep teacher pay fair while fixing the budget. We have things that can happen to us that are deep and ugly setbacks. And this is one of those moments here in the Robbinsdale School District. It's, it's not pretty. Um, but I'm going to choose to lead from a perspective of we have an opportunity here. The district faces cuts due to enrollment declines. It's also in the midst of contract negotiations with the teachers union. 2023 proved to be one frustrating year for home buyers. Inventory declined, interest rates rose, and home prices kept going up. So what will happen in 2024? Will there be signs of improvement? Corey Bork visited with a Maple Grove realtor who gave us some bold predictions. Soon it will be the Super Bowl, and after the big game, home sales typically pick up. But 2023 was anything but typical, with a 17% drop in sales. Depending on the part of town we're seeing, uh, sales were down 20 to 30% in some areas. Maple Grove realtor Brandon Doyle with the Doyle Real Estate Team says mortgage rate increases led to higher payments, but not a drop in home prices. The affordability for those people was challenging, as well as the lack of inventory. The median sales price in the Twin Cities was $368,000 last year. Home buyers would have to make about $100,000 a year to comfortably afford that price. But Doyle says 2024 offers a glimmer of hope. Listings are up slightly, while interest rates have declined. 
You know, I think we're going to see a very busy spring market and then depending on what rates do, that momentum will either carry through to the summer or we could see just a stabilization across the board. Doyle sees the biggest opportunity for the move up buyer who wants new construction. He also sees activity in and around the northwest suburbs. Plymouth has really been a luxury market, so the Hollydale neighborhood is booming. A lot of people want to be in there. Of course, that's going to be a million to two million, so not everyone can afford that. The more affordable areas are kind of just surrounding Maple Grove. So we're looking at Rogers and Corcoran and Dayton. A lot of great options available for uh, families. Doyle also predicts more people willing to make a move. I think this spring we're going to see uh, a lot of new listings come on, and so that's very promising. In Maple Grove, Corey Bork, CCX News. A historic Robbinsdale rest stop could join a list of America's most significant landmarks. Minnesota State's Historic Preservation Office determined that Grazier Park is eligible for the National Register of Historic Places. A final determination will be made by the keeper of the National Register in Washington, D.C. Grazier Park, located off Highway 100 on Lakeland Avenue, is known for its iconic beehive fireplace built during the Great Depression. MN Dot and a group of community volunteers helped restore the stone beehive and the rest of the park. Making the register would help provide future preservation funding. The regular season wraps up this weekend in girls hockey with section play starting in the next week ahead. In this week's CCX Sports Spotlight, Jay Wilcox profiles three seniors who have played key roles for a strong Maple Grove Crimson team. On a team with a lot of young talent, three senior captains for the Maple Grove girls hockey team. Goalie Danny Strom, forward Bella Shipley, and defender Grace Erickson have been steadying influences for the younger girls. They really have been fantastic, and it's not and it's not even just their play. I mean, just the way you see them in the locker rooms, just the way they are with the younger players. Maple Grove entered this there. weekend's regular season right finale with a 17-6 and one record. Netminder Strom is a nominee for Senior Goalie of the Year and has posted eight shutouts with a 95% save percentage while allowing just over one goal per game. It was put on me by my brothers. They put me in the knee hockey net when I was really young and I just kind of fell in love with it and I always wanted to be the volunteer goalie when I was little and then when I finally got the chance I just fell in love with it. Danny's awesome. I can always count on her when I know she's behind me. We have so much fun in practice. She's a great leader. The younger girls look up to her so much. Yeah, Danny's as good as I've ever had. They're, I mean, it's not, it's her compete level too. I mean, you watch her in practice. I mean, and then she's always trying to get better. And this year, you know, she's even added more of herself playing the puck this year. Uh, she directs traffic uh, really well in the zone. Uh, but just at the end of the day, her confidence is through the roof. So I don't think she has, there's no real worries when we're back there. If we give up a two on one, we're not overly happy about it, but we also know she's probably going to stop it. Shipley's top the 20 goal mark and leads the Crimson in points. She's a Ms. Hockey Award nominee. Just always going 100% in practice, coming out early to shoot pucks, staying leg after, playing 200 feet during games. She always works hard. Even in practice, she's always going 100%. And you know you can count on her in games. She's going to make plays. She's going to score goals. And it's just really confident to have her on the team. She works so hard, and she motivates everyone on the team. She's a great teammate on and off the ice. Because the kid never stops working. I mean, it can be in the summer. We're in a tournament in July in the summer and she's the hardest working kid on the ice and I'll have uh, other coaches come to me and say, God, I wish I just had one kid like that in my program that in the middle of July, who's gonna work her tail off like that. And, but if she's just not that type of energy player, she's a goal scorer too. She just recorded her 150th point for us. While Strom and Shipley were known stars coming into the season, Erickson may be the most improved player for the Crimson. She's third in points as a defender with a game that's blossomed. Past two seasons, I. I think I was just still getting used to the game, but now I've kind of got it figured out. So this year, I have definitely seen a little bit of growth in my game. She's been one of our best players this year, every game. She's been so consistent and she plays with a lot of speed and she makes a lot of other teams look foolish because she just seems to be one step ahead of all of them. She's been really good hockey players for us. She was an All-State Honorable Mention last year, but 
I mean, her game has gone to another level right now. I mean, she might be our ace in the hole when we get in the playoffs. We've talked to her a little bit about it, that, you know, have, we're going to need her to have a good series for us. I'm not talking just goals, but she's bringing offensive prowess. She's breaking kids out. Their time as Crimson hockey players will come Seconds to an to end go. soon. Strom will play college scout. hockey for St. Thomas yeah, and Shipley for Minnesota nice State there. Mankato. Oh, nice Erickson's passing up hockey offers to study finance at the University of Minnesota's Carlson School. They have loved being part of Maple Grove hockey and hope to extend their run with a Section 5 AA title. I think we have a good chance. Our section's a good section. Centennial's a pretty good team, but I think we can, we're also a good team and we have a good chance to win the section. For the CCX Sports Spotlight, I'm Jay Wilcox. Maple Grove will compete in the Section 5 AA tournament, which starts with quarterfinal round games next Saturday, February 10th. The championship is Friday the 16th. All games are at Roseville Arena. Find more prep sports games and highlights at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.